In this video, we are demonstrating how to make jewellery in wood using a scroll saw. So we've chosen five different designs and used two different coloured woods together. The start of this process is to mark the design onto the wood itself. So we've used carbon paper to trace the design on. What I find sometimes with the carbon paper is it doesn't always come through clearly. So what you can see me demonstrating is just going back over the lines left by the carbon paper to make it a little bit more clear. Next part of the process is to stick our two different coloured pieces of wood together. So we're using super glue and then squeezing it in the vise to stick together our, in this example, mahogany and oak. The reason we're using two different colours is afterwards we will sand it down so you get the two colours of wood coming through on the front and you get a beautiful contrast. Quite an original idea and an extra feature that you can include with your woodworking projects. So straight on to the making. As you can see, we're drilling holes. This will later on be used for doing our pierce work. So those holes will allow us to feed our scroll saw blade, our pinless scroll saw blade, into the holes to do our pierce work. The blade that we use for our scroll sawing is a Nikua number no. nine reverse tooth blade. That one for us, because of the size of wood that we're cutting, usually between a quarter and half an inch in thickness, we find that it gives us a nice finish and the minimum amount of work afterwards when it comes to sanding. Our scroll saw, you mention it regularly, is a Hegner Multicut 2S. Very well made machine and we find that it gives us a really good finish on our scroll saw projects. Now, I advise anyone who's having a go at these, especially if you are a beginner, I would advise you to actually do the scroll sawing in a specific order. If you do your pierce work first, you can mark your design out on a slightly larger piece of wood and it's easier to grip. So the first demonstration we did on the leaf, I actually did it in reverse. I did the profile of our oak leaf first and then afterwards went on to do the pierce work. However, if you are learning, it is a little bit easier to do the pierce work first and that is because you have a larger piece of wood to grip. This allows you to keep your hands well away from the blade and because it's a larger piece of wood, it's just slightly easier to manage. But again, if you're confident and you're happy to do the profile, then the pierce work, you do what suits yourself. As I mentioned then, we use pinless blades and there's a bit of a debate between what is better, pinless or pin blades. I would always suggest that pinless blades have an advantage in a practical sense because you can drill a smaller hole and feed that blade through as opposed to the pin blades where you need to drill a larger hole. But again, there's no right or wrong. If you're happy working with pin blades, as long as they're doing the job, absolutely fine. So let's just take a moment to uh, focus on the designs that we've chosen. We've chosen a couple of dragons. One of those is actually our logo for our family workshop here, the Love Swim Workshop. Um, we've used dragons then because of course it's a national emblem here in Wales. We work in wood, so we've used leaves. One of the two woods we're using is oak, so we chose an oak leaf. We've also demonstrated making a maple leaf. I would have preferred to have cut this one out in a combination of say walnut and maple. If I did have access to it, I would have preferred to have done our maple leaf in maple. The other design then that we've done is a silhouetted candle in a cross. And we just felt that all of these designs then, they were appropriate for jewelry. 
The type of jewellery then that we're making are necklaces. Now we're on to our sanding. What you'll notice is that I'm actually sanding at an angle. Normally I would be sanding to try and get things square and flat. But in this example I'm sanding at an angle because I want to be able to see the two colours of wood on the front. So that's the reason that we're sanding at an angle, is to bring out the back layer of the woods. After we finish with our belt sander, we then add three coats of shellac sanding sealer. We have in more recent times been using a combination of two coats of shellac sanding sealer and then a final coat of beeswax mixed with linseed oil. But it's just a good example of how you use the finish that suits yourself. Once we've finished then shellacking it, we drill a hole through the side. This will be used to fit the cord through that will be added for our necklace. Drill that hole, just make it big enough to be able to thread that through. Get the cord to the right length that you want to be able to fit it around your neck. Cut it down, tie a knot, and there you go. You've made yourself some simple jewellery in woods. We also then use another method, and that is where we use a spike to bore a little hole in the top of our jewellery. We then use a little metal eye with a screw on the end and screw that into the wood itself and feed the cord through the eye. So a different method then, by using that metal eye, you can feed your cord through a different method for making your necklace. So there you go, five different ideas for making jewellery using a scroll saw. Let us know in the comments section which of those is your favourite, which of them do you plan on having a go at making yourself. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, we'll be back again soon with more videos. Thank you all again.